Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, financial aid resources, skill trade professions, career exploration, and career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best decisions possible. I'm Tony Curitan, your host, and today we are again in our financial literacy. We're, we're in day two of our financial literacy month, and we're going to be talking about understanding checking accounts with Colleen from Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. Welcome back, Colleen. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you for having me again. Happy to, uh, to be here. I appreciate it. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, checking accounts is something I talk about very, very often. Uh, checking accounts, they were known as real as checking accounts because predominantly people use checks to spend the money. They'd write a check and that's how you spend the money. The terminology these days of it's a debit account. I'll get it out of my debit account. It's the same thing as a checking account, but we're predominantly using a debit card to spend the money that's in the account. So just kind of pointing that out if someone says checking account or debit account, it's, it's the same uh, type of account. And since we don't use checks as much anymore, nearly as much anymore, I'm not including checks in my presentation, but I do have a short video at the beginning to show, and it does uh, remind you and talk about some of the, um, the, the appropriate way to write a check. Oh, whoa. Sorry, pal. Eddie! Jen, how's it going? What you got there? I just came from the credit union, and look, they gave me this cool flip book. Uh, Jen? The animation is kind of lame, though. I don't think that's a flip book. The numbers in the corner get bigger, but that's pretty much it. Jen, I think that's your checkbook. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. See, here's the drawer information. That's you. The payee, or the recipient of the money, goes here. And your credit union, because it's the financial institution where the check can be presented for payment, is the drawee. The dollar amount goes here, a memo goes here, and this is where you sign to issue the check. Hmm. Nice try. Checks have come a long way. The very first checks were written like letters. In the 1700s, the first printed checks were on special paper that you could only get at the bank. These checks featured fancy designs that were difficult to copy and made forgeries easy to spot. That's actually where the word itself comes from, checking for forgery. Huh, should I be worried if my checks look kind of simple? Nope, your checks have other security features, microprinting, check numbers, and even basic things like writing out the dollar amount help protect you from check fraud. What about these numbers down here? Those numbers identify your financial institution, your account number, and your check number. They make it possible for checks to be read and sorted by machine. In the early days of checking, bank clerks would actually meet at the end of the day to exchange checks and settle the balances. These days, financial institutions send check images electronically to speed up the process. If everything is so speedy now, how come there's a waiting period when I deposit a check? The holding period is the amount of time it takes your financial institution to clear the check meaning they verify the amount and transfer the money. It can vary from a couple of days to a week or more, depending on the financial institution. If there are insufficient funds to complete the transfer, the check bounces. Not literally, Jen. Eddie, do you think checks are gonna be around for much longer? They seem kind of old fashioned, especially compared to stuff like debit cards and automatic payments. Checks aren't as popular as they once were, but they're still in use for things like payroll, rent, and utility bill payments. So knowing how to write a check and understanding the holding period is still an important part of balancing a checking account. Gotcha, thanks Eddie. You got it. 
Seriously, you gotta stop doing that. Awesome. I was going to put my video back back on. <laughs> okay. It's curious. Can I put the video is the video back on? I just, that's okay. Uh, so getting started with a checking account. Checking accounts are something for everyone. It's not uh, necessarily anything you have to uh, kind of earn credit to get towards. Uh, it's a place to store your money, all right? So knowing and getting involved and having a checking account is really your first steps into being able to manage uh, your own money. I put these two cards on here purposely because they look very similar, right? I mean, they look almost identical, right? It's just a different number. Well, one of these is a debit card and one is a credit card. Well, how do you know? How can you tell the difference? They both have a, a visa. You know, they both have this, this little chip. It looks the same. This little word debit here in the corner this is the only way that you're going to tell the difference when you're looking at a card to identify whether it's a debit card or a credit card. And it very much makes a difference. <laughs> they are two different things and they are used completely different ways. So I just wanted to point out if you're not sure or if someone says, no, no, this is my credit card or no, 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 this doesn't come out of my checking account. Say, let me see the corner, let, let, me, let me see your card. Accessing funds, that is something you want to be able to do wherever you are. And we are so lucky this day and age that we have so many options uh, instead of before, you know, years and years ago. Uh, if you were out on an island, if you were on vacation in a different state, it was very hard to access your own money. And that's why people would take these uh, traveler's checks and, you know, lots of cash because uh, it it was hard to access your money. Now, uh, there's ATMs. You can go to ATMs. They're almost everywhere, gas stations, uh, airports. If you are have a bank account, uh, let's say Chase, you can go to any Chase account, or excuse me, any Chase account, any Chase ATM, and access your money for free. You have Flagstar, you can go to a Flagstar ATM and access your money for free. If you kind of swap those, or if you have an MSGCU account and you go to Chase ATM, you will still be able to access your money, but it will not be free. So in a pinch, any ATM will do, but why in a pinch, right? We, we never want to pay fees. We want everything to be free. So if you have a credit union, if you are a member of a credit union, like Michigan Schools and Government, uh, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union, Genesis, there's lots and lots of credit unions. They are part of a cooperative, a cooperative share, meaning 30,000 ATMs, the ATMs at Genesis and Lake Trust and Lake Michigan Credit Union are treated or are seen uh, the same as an MSGCU ATM. A lot of people are reluctant to open an uh, account at a credit union. Uh, oh, they only have a couple locations. You know, they're really only in this, this county. They're very small. Well, this, that may make sense but you can still access their money for free just the same as if it were, you know, a, a big national bank. Uh, there are co-op shared branches uh, where you can be out of state 
uh, and if you have to do a, a transaction, um, there's less and less need to go into a branch for a transaction now with such uh, mobile uh, abilities, but it is possible. Oh, goes right into it perfectly. <laughs> that almost anything you can do walking into the lobby, you can do from your screen. And especially after COVID, COVID pretty much created a virtual solution for everything. I mean, there were people applying for mortgages, you know, in our drive-through lane. So if you think you can do it, look into it. If you think there might be an easier way to do it, there also might be. Uh, mobile apps are a must have, no matter what financial institution you have, uh, bank, credit union, I can 99.9% .9 guarantee they have a free app that they encourage you to use to keep track of your purchases, your account balances, uh, maybe if you have any you know, loans or credit cards through that you know, institution. Having it in your hand, the mobile on the go, is, is really such a deal breaker. You can check your balance standing in line. You can move money back and forth. You're sitting in the back seat of someone's car. You can pay a bill that you just remembered is due tomorrow, you know, as soon as you think about it. Um, remote check deposit, being able to take a picture of your check front and back and say, okay, deposit, instead of having to get into the car and drive to the ATM. That may not sound like, you know, okay, so I don't have to do an errand. But let's say you babysit a lot. Let's say you're going to graduate, get a bunch of happy graduation checks. You may, you know, cut hair or do landscaping where you get paid in, in checks often. And then it gets, you know, it gets annoying. You got to get a hold on to them. Which one did I deposit? Which one didn't I deposit? You can do them right then and there. It will still have a hold. So it's, it's just like you handed it to them in person. It still needs to be verified. But you can deposit it uh, right there. So definitely set up online banking, set up mobile apps, uh, poke around, uh, you know, see what you can find. Um, card controls is that option where if you, well, that's specific to MSGCU and it's specific to some other credit unions. So what you can do on the online banking is going to be specific to your uh, institution, but there'll be lots of cool stuff. <laughs> So using the debit card. Now this is this is the meat and potatoes of the checking account, right? This is what everyone loves. You know, we don't use checks. Um, you know, how do we spend the money? So these two kind of background pictures probably look familiar to you, right? When you use your debit card at a you know cashier, at a register, at a gas pump. The purchase is going through either as a debit option, as a as a PIN transaction or as a credit option with the signature. Now we're gonna go over this. <laughs> what you are probably more familiar with is the debit option. If you have a debit card or you've been around people who have debit cards, you'll notice when they swipe or when they put the, the card in the bottom, a screen will show up that says debit or credit. You have to pick one or the other. When I asked high schoolers, uh, well, which one do you pick? They will debit. I say, okay, why? Uh, I don't know, because it's a debit card, so I figure I'm supposed to pick debit. Okay, I mean, that's not a wrong answer, but it's not really an informed answer either. Uh, either way, whether you choose debit or credit, the machine knows it's a debit card. We're going to go over credit option. It does not magically turn into a credit card. It is not a loan. It is still your debit card. So if you choose the debit option, it's going to ask you to enter your PIN. The four digit PIN you use at the ATM that you don't tell anyone, you don't write down in your wallet, you don't uh, make it something really obvious, it's, you know, your, your, your football number. Um, you will see also, if you use the debit option, a screen that says, would you like cash back? 
uh, $20, $40, $60, $80. Uh, and you can just say no. You can just click no and move on to the next page. Or you can say, hmm, do I need any cash? You know what? I owe Ms. Kirtan those that $20 I promised her. I, I better get it now, and then I don't have to stop, uh, you know, with the ATM. So, yeah, you know what? I would like $20 cash back. Or, you know what? There was an ice cream truck or a food truck outside. Uh, there was Girl Scouts selling cookies, uh, you know, something that I wanted cash for, anything. It really doesn't matter. Having the ability to say, oh, I can get that right now. I can basically use the register as an ATM is super beneficial. Now, you have to buy something. And 80 to $100 is the most I've seen able to be taken out. It's not an ATM where you can take hundreds. Uh, of dollars. It's just uh, a quick bit of money. Real-time payment, meaning, I always uh, use shoes as the example. So let's say we went to DSW and we bought a pair of shoes for $50. And we stood in line and said, oh my gosh, I, I, I need that $20 cash. Okay. So now $70 is taken out of my checking account, 50 for the shoes, and I act, I, I hold my own $20 out. You know, it's not that DSW is giving me their $20. So $70 comes out of my checking account. If I were to log on to the mobile app while I'm walking out of the store, I'll see it right there. It'll say, well, DSW, $70 right there. There it is. Uh, that's it. Almost every store you'll see. Uh, included in the daily limit, most checking accounts have a $500 daily limit. Um, but again, we're gonna, I'm going to solve that problem for you too. So this is probably what you're most familiar with. But what does it mean if you choose the credit option? Again, we're still talking about your debit card. It is not going to ask you for your PIN. It will probably have you sign your name instead. It will not give you a cash back option. It will still withdraw from your debit account. It's still coming from the same place. And payment pending in your account, for example, moving uh, ahead. Oops, oh. Oh, no, where did the screen go? Okay, well, I guess it's not in this one. Boo. I had a picture of a pending uh, transaction. <laughs> um, pending, if you were to buy the $50 pair of shoes, you can't get any cash back. Now you're walking out of the store. You log on to the mobile app. You'll see DSW $50 pending. See you went there. We see you spent the money. The money is spoken for. It just, it kind of has one, one foot left in the account. It's, the money's technically still there. As far as you're concerned, it's spent, right? So you may see a present, val present balance and available balance uh, because you have some purchases where it hasn't completely finalized. A credit transaction, credit option transaction is not included in your daily limit. So you may say to yourself, well, $500 in a rare occasion, you know, I may have to spend more than $500 in one day. You know, what if I have to buy plane tickets or, you know, book, book a hotel room or something? Ask for the credit option or, or say, can I, can I use credit for this? Um, well, if you say, can I use credit for this, they're probably going to ask for your credit card. If you say, I would like to use my debit card, but I want to process it as credit, you know, can I do that? spend over the $500. Now, you will not always get a choice. Sometimes it'll just, the very first thing it asks you is, what's your pin? Uh, if you are at a restaurant and you give your credit card, excuse me, if you give your debit card to the server, you're certainly not, not telling them your pin or giving them your pin. You know, all you're doing is signing your name. You don't get any money back. If you are buying something online from Amazon. You're not typing in your PIN. You know, you're, you're not even signing your name. You're kind of docu-signing your name in a way. So it's acknowledging that you spent the money. You'll see that you went to the restaurant. You'll see that you ordered it on Amazon, 
but it's not necessarily going to be completely taken out of your account until, you know, let's say it ships or, or you know, it, it finalizes maybe a day, day or two or three. We're not talking weeks here. We're talking day or two. Now, as far as you are concerned, the consumer buying the $50 pair of shoes, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. There is not a right answer and a wrong answer. If, she, if you want cash back, well, then the debit option is a better option. Uh, why might someone purposefully choose the debit option? Uh, well, I mentioned uh, needing cash back. Uh, some people like to put in the pin. They feel, uh, you know, it's, I want everything to be a pin transaction. Uh, other people just really prefer real-time withdrawal. You know, they don't want to deal with pending uh, or available balance, present balance. So just, just take it out right away. It's easier for me to read. Okay. Those are three very good reasons you might choose the debit option on this occasion or, you know, default for almost any occasion. Why might someone purposefully choose the credit option instead if offered? Well, what if you're in a situation where you don't feel comfortable entering your PIN? You know, whether that's uh, because of, you know, the area, the, it looks unsafe and kind of sketchy. Maybe it's because someone's looking over your shoulder. Maybe you have a sibling or a friend with you who's bugging you. Oh, I bet I know what your PIN is. I bet I know what your PIN is. Let me, let me see. It's your birthday, isn't it? And you're like, hey, it is my birthday. I don't, I don't want them to see that. If you don't want to put your PIN in, get the credit option. It's not going to ask you for your PIN. It's just going to ask you to sign your name. I personally prefer signing my name to putting in the PIN. Uh, if, you were to, <laughs> if you were to think of the first name Colleen in cursive, you know, it's C, O, L, L, there are these big loops. It's just, it's like eight loops in a row. So I have this silly reason, you know what? I just prefer my, I just prefer writing my signature. I could purposefully choose the credit option because I need to spend more. You know, maybe I uh, went shopping this morning and bought some groceries and, you know, went to the eye doctor and, you know, bought myself some pizza. And then I got to stop by the bookstore so I can pick up you know, a book for my new class. And it turns out this, you know, science lab book is $300 and I'm freaking out. And how am I going to pay? That's okay. As a, if I, I'm going to purposely choose the credit option to buy that textbook, it'll come from the same place. It'll spend, it'll cost the same amount. And you can, you know, spend more than that daily. The daily limit is for debit transactions. I want to highlight, put in red, uh, uh, scream nice and loud. Pending does not mean you have extra time to put the money in. It does not mean it's a credit card and you'll, you'll get them back later. The money needs to be in the account. It needs to be authorized to be there. When they run your credit card, credit card, when they run your debit card, um, you know, the first time, before they hand it back to you to write the tip in and sign your name, they're running it through to authorize. Is this account authorized to spend this much? So you do need to have the money in there. It is not a juggling uh, match of, well, how long uh, do I have to get this? Nope. Again, there's no right answer or wrong answer. It's situational. Again, you may prefer credit option as a default or debit option as a default. But there are specific situations where one of them is going to be more beneficial to you. Uh, the cash back uh, on vacation, out of state, out of state for any reason, even just in a new uh, area, but especially vacation where you probably maybe don't have transportation or you, you know, you're on a beach. Go to the nearest CVS. Uh, I'll take this bottle of water and 60 bucks or this pack of gum and 80 bucks. It's basically a free ATM right there. And that's hugely convenient not having to physically go to an ATM, even though you can find a free one. 
So it's having these options available to you and saying, well, which, what's easiest for me before I just get in the car and drive somewhere and go to the first bank I see and put the card in and pay a fee because that's just what I assume I'm supposed to do. Well, you could, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's a much faster, uh, more convenient, you know, cheaper way to do that. Um, another one about needing cash back and it lost my mind. <laughs> That's, um, sorry, I'm, I, I lost it. <laughs> um, so when we talk about spending money in our checking account and needing to have that money in order to make a purchase, the consequence of that is overdraft is going, you know, overdrafting, spending over what you have. Now, even if it's a credit option, it's gonna see, oh, well, there's, there's not $50 in this account. There's only $30 in this account. So it's gonna authorize it and say, sure, we'll, we'll, we as MSGCU or we as Chase, whoever it is, is happy to cover that for you. They will cover that missing $20, and, and we're just going to charge you a, a, a quick, like, $35 fee uh, for, to make up for it. You, you'll, you'll never know. We'll just put the fee. We'll take it out automatically. Um, we'll send you something in the mail that you'll get in a week from now. Uh, we want to avoid that whole situation. Here's what happens. We know how much we have, right? How do we know what our balance is? because we can check it out mobily in, in 30 seconds, right? We're standing in line, we're sitting at the computer, um, wherever we are, and we're pretty sure that I have this much, but you know, maybe I have the date wrong. Maybe I thought today's Friday and it's payday, or maybe I thought it's Friday, uh, excuse me, it's payday, but it's next Friday. Or I thought it was the 31st day and it's the first day of the month and my rent automatically comes out. There are reasons why you accidentally may go into the negative, right? So knowing that, how do we avoid it? What can we do to prevent ourselves from doing that? So one, just monitoring. You've got the mobile app. With the fingerprint login, literally you put the fingerprint and boom, there you are. None of, none of the like have to capitalize and numbers. And it's really annoying to type in a password like that, you know, on a phone. So I highly recommend the uh, fingerprint login. Alerts. Again, this is something you'll look for uh, probably through your online banking. Uh, I prefer text alerts. I'm assuming uh, most people prefer text alerts these days. Uh, a low balance alert. Oh, we're letting you know you have less than $50 in your account. Oh, wow, okay, good. And then maybe you tell it to send you another uh, text when you have less than $20 in your account. And you're like, oh, man, oh, wow. Now, if I get a text this morning and I wake up and it says, wow, I have less than $20 in my account, I can still go and stop it eBay on the way to work and, you know, buy $25 of gas and get a coffee. I'm, I'm still able to, you know, and then have a fee. But hopefully seeing this text and acknowledging, oh, wow, I have less than I thought. I better not go to Speedway and I better not buy a coffee on the way, you know, to work today. Uh, I got to be real careful for the next, you know, two, three, four, however many days. So it's not a foolproof, but it does all the hard work for you. All you got to do is look at your phone. and set it up to tell you um, which, whatever level do you want, 100, you know, 90. Uh, when you open your account, you want to sit and talk with someone. You do not want to open your first checking account uh, online or, or over the phone. You really want to go in and face-to-face -face have someone walk you through it, show you, uh, explain things to you. Uh, you are going to want to know all of this. Nobody's going to care about your account and your money more than you, right? So you should know this. Uh, so you have protection. Protection being, using the example, we spent $50. Uh, 
and we only had 30 in the account, so it went negative 20. Then I got a $30 fee, so now I have negative 50. And maybe I stopped to get gas on the way home without knowing it, so I spent another $20, so now it's negative 70. So then I got another $30 fee because I went in the negative again, so now I'm negative 100. Instead, I can have it set up ahead of time to route that, you know, missing money to come out of my savings account. So instead of going negative 20 on my checking, I'll stay at zero and it would take $20 from my savings account that I would have to have at that same financial institution. Uh, again, you're still spending the money. It's not a foolproof solution because there's still going to be, you know, like a $4 fee for that. And you really don't want to have to use your savings account to bill you out of debit card purchases, right? But having it as a safety net, absolutely. You want to set up these safety nets because you're just getting started. You're going to make mistakes. Uh, you'll learn from them and then you'll make the same mistake. You know, it takes time to get into the habit. So uh, just the earlier you can get started, uh, the, the more you can try and get involved, uh, the better. Keeping your account secure, more important today than ever. Uh, it's just, it's, if you watch TV and movies, it's unbelievable what, what people can do on computers and uh, find out. Uh, commit to monitoring your accounts daily. And that sounds like a lot of work, but again, mobile apps, fingerprint login, let me just see my transactions. Well, why would I do that? I didn't buy anything today. Okay, well, did somebody else? <laughs> Nobody else used your card, did they? You know, you just, you want to check. You don't want to be super fearful and paranoid, but hey, fingerprint login, no one used my account today, perfect. Uh, check for yourself, you know, wait, I didn't get gas in the way. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, or maybe you didn't realize that someone had uh, cashed a check that you sent them or a bill finally went through. So it's, it's just getting a status update, right? It's saying commit to just getting a status update. If you wait till you get a, a monthly statement and then you call the credit union and say, oh man, there's all this stuff on here that I didn't spend. It's, it started two weeks ago. They'll say, well, why, why are you calling us two weeks later? Why did you not notice that there was you know, theft fraud two weeks ago? This is very suspicious. You want it reported right away. Beware of scams. Again, I know the first reaction is, well, that doesn't happen to me. You know, I, I'm too smart for a scam. I hate to say nobody's too smart for a scam. Uh, it's unbelievable how many uh, el elderly scams we come across at MSGCU of uh, older people coming in saying, I need $20,000 cash right now. I need $15,000 cash right now. And, you know, we ask a few questions and get to the bottom of, no, that you're not talking to your, you know, grandson, you're not talking to, you know, a police officer. Uh, but we've also seen a lot of teens because teens, uh, you know, you want to kind of show off. You want to, you know, sure, I'll use my account. You know, sure, you want to use my card? Uh, you know, we're trusting. We're very trusting of our best friends. And my best friend would never do anything like that. So I trust her with my, you know, debit or my, you know, ATM card and PIN number. Well, okay, but who is your, who's your best friend with? Is she taking someone else to the ATM? Did that person just take a picture of your card and now they have the number to go online and buy stuff? You know, it's not as easy as she won't use it this one time. Now she knows the PIN, she can use it anytime. So there's a lot of down the road consequences that you don't think of right away. So any information someone's inquiring about your account, especially at a younger age, you know, it's, it, it's imperative that we get your checking account for your, you know, your, your credit or your home loan or your, no, you, you, your car warranty is going to expire. No, no, nope, I don't need that. Nope. I don't have a car warranty. Money that sits in your checking account is your money and it's just sitting there and you don't want um, to give the account information away to anyone. 
uh, don't respond to easy money. Uh, some of them are scholarships. Uh, hey, you won the scholarship. Uh, remember, you you were the top, you know, student in in Michigan, and uh, we're going to deposit the money right into your account. Could you just send us, you know, the routing and you know just blah 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 this information. No scholarship is going to deposit the money in your personal account. You're going to send it to the school. Uh, no company, uh, no viable or worth anything business is really going to ask for really personal, you know, PIN number. We will not even ask for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you feel uncomfortable, if someone says you have to pay this today, you have to tell me this right now, hang up. And that's what I always say, just hang up. Because someone calls and says, this is fraud. We got to go over some bank account stuff. Hang up. You know what? Call your bank. Call call your bank right back. You know, call call where they said they were from. If it's actually from your bank or your credit union, then they'll have absolutely no problem with that. Oh yes, let's go over. You know what? Uh, you know what I see. But nine times out of ten, you're going to call your bank back and they'll say, uh, "No, I I don't see anything unusual here." So do not feel bad about hanging up at any point in the conversation and then call, you know, the 800 number or the local number of whatever company, you know, they say they're from. Uh, some key takeaways uh, from checking today, again, safe, secure access to your cash. You don't have to carry around a bunch of cash all the time. Uh, you don't even necessarily have to carry around your debit card all the time. You know, you can, uh, buy things with just your phone these days. Checks are legally binding documents. They do need to be filled out correctly. Uh, they can be turned down in the same way uh, a pharmacist uh, say, you know, says, ah, this prescription doesn't look right. I'm not going to fill it. A teller can say, mm, this check doesn't look fishy. I'm not going to cash it. So even if it's a perfectly good check that someone was using purple glitter and thought they'd make as pretty as, as possible, may be turned away uh, because you didn't worry about the spelling or you forgot to, two numbers don't match. You know, you wrote $25, but then you put a, a 50 over here, you know, then it's not going to be cash. Uh, almost anything you can do at a branch, you can do at one of our mobile services. I always say, ask questions, ask questions. It's your money, no matter what finance we're talking about, you should be confident about whatever it is. Uh, so feel confident in uh, your checking account. If you don't have one, uh, oh, I believe that's the next, I think there was, yep, that was the next one, opening a <laughs> Uh You'll need your a social security number. Uh, you don't need to bring the card and you'll need a government photo ID. So driver's license or passport, if you don't have a driver's license or passport, there's some people who are 16 or 17 uh, or maybe even 18 who don't have a driver's license yet. Well, if you're under, if you're 18 and under, you can bring your school photo ID, at least to MSGCU, and it'll count. Um, but you want to bring that stuff with you. Uh, you want to probably make an appointment. You want to call and say, you know, hey, I live in Madison Heights, so how about I come in Madison Heights branch at 3 o'clock? And, you know, now someone's going to be designated to sit there with you and take their time uh, and talk to you for who knows an hour or so. They're not, you know, quick accomplishing a task. You just came in to stop by and open an account. No, you wanted to sit down and have a, an experience. All right. Uh, that's a little bit of a lot of information. <laughs> Do you have, or were there any questions at all or anything I could uh, clarify? Oh, see, there it is. Now it came up. I think it was because you were using the phone mechanism and it hadn't rebooted to incorporate the visual, you know, technology. <laughs> Uh, I didn't enough. have any, I didn't have any questions. It's really good. Um, 
is, you know, we're fading away from actually writing checks anymore. And we're just going to utilize the car, but it, it is still important that you keep track of your balance so that you're not overextending yourself. You know, um, you should take time to write down what you spend your money on so that you can, you know, keep track of that. Cause I've in the past, oh, I thought I had enough. <laughs> you, you forgot to write down that $20 here and $20 there. And so, yeah, it, it adds up or you, you know, sometimes by the, the end of the day today, someone mentioned something from this morning and I'm like, that was, that was days ago. And they're like, no, yeah. that was this morning. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, definitely keeping track. And you mentioned um, moving away from checks. Exactly. Know what a check is supposed to look like. So if someone's paying you in checks, you know, is this a valid check? Are they just trying to get away with it because people don't know what, you know, what it's supposed to look like anymore? Absolutely. So there's a lot, of, a lot of things to look out for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, again, great presentation. I don't have any questions. There aren't any questions in the chat. Um, if you have any question, quickly check, you know, type it in or raise your hand and I'll unmute you either way. <laughs> I don't mind. All right, well, in that case, we will bring this presentation to an end. Thank you so much, Colleen. Um, All right, thank again, you so much. Have a great day. Bye now. <laughs>